370 days ago, I recorded a video for my future self. I titled this video to my 21 year old self. And here I am, 21 years old, um, and I'm about to watch this video. I recorded this kind of like a an experiment to see where I would be in a year's time. I try to, you know, guess where I'll be and imagine what my life will be like in the moment. Um, and I haven't watched this video since I recorded it, but I do remember some things I've said and it's gonna be very interesting. I know that this guy, like the person I am today is just completely different. And I'm sure we'll find out on this video, like how I speak, how I think, um, like words I use and stuff like this. This is gonna be very interesting. If you're new to the channel, this isn't like my usual videos. I don't do these like react type shit, but I hope if you're a new entrepreneur and you're just starting out, you might find some value in this video. Um, but without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Hello. Hey man. My name is Marcus. Yo. So as you can see, this guy looks completely different to me. Um, you know, he's got hair. I shaved off my hair. It's kind of grown back. I need a haircut right now. Um, but yeah, everything's basically different, different environment. I'm back home here. Um, you know, I'm in beautiful Thailand um, right now. Excuse my bed. I've got a bunch of dog shit on there. Um, but let's just keep going. I'm trying to hide my face. You're trying to hide so your I face. So I don't look at myself. Okay. Hello. Hey man. My name is Marcus. Yo. I am 20 years old today. Um, yes. So I recorded this video when I was 19 and I just turned 20, but the video is to my 21 year old self, if that makes sense. Just wanted to make this video just to basically talk about where I am currently and where I will be in one year. So it's quite confident. This time next year, this video is going to be uploaded. I'm going to try and predict where I am. Um, you can see this guy's like, um, he's not focused. He's not present with the camera like i when, when i speak to the camera nowadays i do look off to the side a lot and i kind of like i stop and i think but the reason i don't look at the camera is because i'm just like trying to think and it's very conversational this guy struggled to even look at a camera lens like he he genuinely had difficulty he was um a lot more socially anxious and um you know just had no confidence in himself and we'll continue to see that i'm sure hopefully i still upload this video regardless of whether i get my predictions right probably not but um <laughs> yeah so another thing sorry um, I thought I'd, I thought I wouldn't even show this video. I thought I'd be too embarrassed. So here we are. Basically, I just want to talk about things that are happening. Um, so <laughs> right now I'm building my fitness programs. So cool. they're going to be sold pretty soon. It's almost done. Just, just one of them is almost done, but I'm going to sell them all at once. Um, that's going to be... Okay, entrepreneur lesson um, number one. I'm sure there's going to be a lot in this video. So this guy was trying to build fitness programs because, um, well, he didn't really have a, because he just thought that people would buy his products because he made them for some reason. Like that's genuinely the thinking when you're a new entrepreneur. And I'm gonna, I think I'll roast myself in this video. I don't want anyone to think I like hate my past self or anything. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of speak about the things I did wrong and I now know in hindsight. And I hope in the future, um, I can look back on this video and then go, yeah, you knew nothing as well. So I hope to continue continue this trend. Um, but the first thing is that this guy was creating a product with no um, real set knowledge of whether this would work in the market or not. There was no differentiator. Um, there was no USP, so unique selling proposition. I think that <laughs> I just use words, guys. Um, but this guy was like, his thinking was, all right, I've been through kind of a fitness journey. Not really, like not, not roasting this guy, but you know, nothing crazy. Um, but I guess I just thought that the world owed me something because I'd gone through a fitness journey and that people would buy my product if I made it. That's mistake number one. Um, number two, you, you can't really think like this. You do need to validate your ideas with the market because ultimately the market's gonna buy your product. So if you're trying to you know start your own business, don't do what I've done in the past where I've made the product and then you know I, like I literally spent months and months and months of my time on this product and it's genuinely like not a bad product if we're judging the product alone but the offer isn't there and by offer I mean just like what are you actually giving to the market how are you helping people like it's easy to create a product and this is where a lot of people start they have an idea for a product um, but it doesn't actually help anyone it's not a vehicle for change um, you need to start with what you're actually trying to like help with who are you trying to help how is your offer going to help them and then you build a product around the offer so say just um, for example just looking at a plant out the window I see that the plants you know it's kind of it looks a bit old well I could say well I'm sure there's a lot of people struggling with plants is it really a massive pain point no probably not but you know let's just pretend it was let's pretend that anyone who had a plant that was dying it was like the worst shit ever and they hated their life well, okay, well, I perceive that. Okay, um, 
you know, what am I familiar with? What are my skills and knowledge around this um, this area of expertise, right? Well, I could think, all right, well, I've been like a botanist for a few years and I perceive that the market really needs help with this and they don't, there's nothing really else that's helped them. And I also, you know, I'm a young person, so I think I could like focus down into the niche of young people trying to fix their plant issues, okay? So that would kind of be like an offer and then you build the product around solving that problem in the offer, okay? So before I've even built a plant spray solution or a special type of tool that can cut the plant or any of this stuff, you think of the desire and what the market needs and then you build the product around that. Rather than thinking like, oh, I should come up with a plant spray so solution, that'd be so cool. Oh, who could I who could I actually sell this to? Oh, it doesn't really matter. I'll just work on the product development, blah, 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 blah. So hopefully I made my point clear, but this is what this guy was doing. He was doing product development before validating the idea with the market. Step one for my little business plan idea that I've got going on. Um, overall, I think, pardon me for not looking at the camera, just trying to hide this thing. Okay. Yeah, so this guy couldn't even look at the camera. Um, or like look at his face in the preview. He, well, I'm not really sure what this guy thought would happen if he if he looked at the camera or he looked at his own face. Like he's, he's clearly not ugly. I've got a big ass pimple on my nose right now and I'm happy talking to the camera. So it's definitely a confidence thing. It's not ever about how you look. It's about how you perceive yourself internally and the level, uh, the level of respect you have for yourself. I didn't really script what I'm going to talk about like this today. Guy's, this guy's kind of cute, is he not? Like he's, you know, he's he's a little bit timid, but he's not he's not ugly. He has no reason to, you know, hide his face. No, oh, I'm so awkward and anxious. Like, you know. But essentially, I want to predict what's where where I'm going to be in a year, and essentially just kind of hopefully do these every year to kind of look back, hopefully on where I thought I was. Scratching um, face. So this is the first sign of like um, anxious body language and anxious just language in general. Um, hopefully scratching face, neck, not looking at the camera. Yeah, hopefully I'll do these every year. I'm not really sure. Like I think people will buy my products. Like you cannot have this um, low level um, view of yourself if you want to succeed in business. Because if you can't even like, if you can't even buy into yourself and buy into your own product, then how are other people going to buy your own, buy your products? Okay. If you don't trust yourself, how do you expect other people to trust you? And you know, we'll get into this further. I'm sure I didn't even launch. So um, just to cut in, sorry, I know I'm all over the place, but this video was made for a YouTube channel I had prior. Okay. It was kind of similar to the one I have now that you're seeing, but it was more focused on self-improvement, this whole young man bullshit. Um, but like I, my, my dream here was to create a YouTube channel and like, I don't know, like entertain people. I don't really know what my goal was cause I didn't have a goal, but, um, this YouTube channel, I quit after like a few weeks, like I was making videos and then my like inner anxiety or self-sabotage or like internal voice just got hold of me. Like it had done years before. Um, you know, you're probably not familiar with my story over the past 10 years. I've been making YouTube channels. I've been making businesses. I've been doing all this stuff and consistently self-sabotaging them one after the other. Okay. And it's only recently that I've gotten over this. Um, but yeah, this guy, he, um, like the, what you're seeing here is the, the prequel to the, uh, like the failure of this business. If you want to call that, it's not really failure. I just quit, but, um, yeah, continuing on. So starting off, we are going to talk about what I'm working on with the business. So I've just finished my certificates in fitness. Originally I wanted. <laughs> so entrepreneur mistake number two, thinking that you need certificates, thinking that you need um, some sort of like, uh, I don't know, like any of this bullshit, go to university to start a business, um, especially an online one. You don't need any of this dog shit, okay? I thought that people would buy my products um, or people would trust me more if I had certificates in fitness, it's just utter bullshit. Um, you can pretty much practice anything these days. And look, if you just state it out there, like, you know, people aren't gonna ask, like that's the reality, people just won't ask. But if they do, just tell them, say, hey, no, I don't have a fit, I don't have a fitness certificate, but look at my body, look at my abs. You know, I was here, I am here now, I know all the struggles. You know, what's more important, having a journey and understanding the nuances of the product you're offering, or is it just a little piece of paper that the government gave you because they like conned you into paying for something, okay? So this is what this guy thought. He thought he needed certificates, he thought he needed all this stuff before he could even release his product, before he could even validate it with the market. Um, and it's a big uh, beginner mistake. It's basically like 
Um, I don't know what the like I don't, I'm not sure if it's entirely like societal conditioning, um, but school does this. You know, you go to school for twelve years and they're like, you need certificates, you need to go to uni if you want to get a high paying job, like all this bullshit. So don't believe it. Start your own business. Um, like any. And like what this guy did, he kind of knew this in the underlying feeling. He'd heard this before from YouTubers and, and stuff like this. Um, but in reality, he was just scared and he didn't want to actually release his product because that meant that people might judge it and he might get hurt. Okay. So don't use this certificate bullshit as an excuse. Just start and just make the product and validate it with the market and just do the work. I wanted to do uh, PT work, the personal training work. I don't think I want to do that anymore. Um, I'm still, I've still finished my certificates anyway, so that is an option in the future. However, I think that um, working on online business, entrepreneurship is a lot more important to take me where I want to go in life. I don't, I Not can't wrong. envision myself just working for money um, like I'm currently doing, just working at a restaurant. And if I don't show up for work, then that's no money. So like, for example, like next week I have a day off for some reason. Um, that is a day where I'm just not going to earn money, um, which is just doesn't seem viable. I, it doesn't make sense to live like that as a human. I um, yeah, look, not wrong, but um, I guess entrepreneur mistake number three is that thinking that all jobs are evil and all jobs aren't going to get you to where you want to go. After this restaurant job, I worked in a warehouse for a bit um, and that job was very, very crucial to me um, for getting money because then I used that money to propel my early um, business and my early um, courses that I bought to learn skills. So don't ever think that, oh no, the YouTuber told me, all businesses, are, uh, all jobs are bad and I must start my own online business because in your early days, you don't have any money, right? All you have is time, but you, you know, you can have infinite time in the world. If you don't have any sort of skill, if you don't have any sort of knowledge, um, you just won't succeed, unfortunately. Like what, I, I'm so grateful I had these jobs over the years and what I see a lot in um, this YouTube space, this like online entrepreneur mistake, uh, space is a lot of mistakes people are making, especially young guys, is that they've listened to this, you don't need a job, you, you just need to like, just grind and hustle and work on your laptop and do social media marketing, blah, blah, blah. The reality is these jobs teach you very valuable skills early on. And like any advice I'd give to someone just starting out is get a job, like especially if you're like 13, 14 years old, get a job, learn how like businesses actually work. And like, th this is super contrarian, you'll never hear this anywhere else. But I would literally say start working at McDonald's, like go to KFC, go to McDonald's, go to these businesses where it's such a safe environment for young people. And you learn the most basic skills of business. You learn like how like McDonald's and KFC and all these fast food places, they're so systemized. And what you learn from this is how to structure a business and why things work. If you can have that le level of taking a look at a look around and going, okay, this is a multi-billion dollar industry and they hire 13 year olds and it works. Like, how does this actually work? If you can take a look around and go, all right, so he's doing the burgers and he does it like this. Why does he do it like this? And if you can just examine the environment um, and figure that out, you can then apply that to your early businesses and learn how to structure things and learn how like cash flow works and learn how like people are buying things and basic core desires and needs. And you also learn how to speak to people. One of the best things I would say is go into hospitality, learn how to speak to people, have the experience of a, a customer saying, fuck you, you got my order wrong. Like, <laughs> especially when you're like a 13 year old kid, you're like, what the hell is going on? It's the most valuable experience ever. So yeah, don't ever think that jobs are bad. Don't listen to this bullshit. Like never get a job, just like grind and hustle because ultimately at the end of the day, you're selling your product to customers and to humans. So if you're 14 years old and you don't know how to talk to a human, like imagine if this YouTube video, um, if in this YouTube video, I'd never talked to a human before. And I was like, uh, so guys, like, um, like, could you imagine? But because I've experienced talking to people and I'm by no means the best talker in the world, but because I've experienced talking to people, I can get on camera, I can just say, hey, yo, what, what's going on dickhead, blah, 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 blah. And it feels like a real conversation because I've had real conversations. A lot of 14 year olds are starting their own business, um, watching like all these like YouTubers and stuff. And you know, when it gets time to hop on a sales call or when it gets time to make YouTube content for you know client acquisition, they're like, um, um, um. And then they just think back to what they've watched on YouTube and then they go, you guys need to do this. And like, they just repeat everything they say. And that's why you can watch these YouTube videos from these 14 year olds. And it sounds exactly like, you know, Andrew Tate or someone else. It's just like, 
dude, you're going to learn some skills first. So that's um, whatever number we're on. Entrepre- entre- I, I, I can't speak. You know what I mean. Phil, I mean, not everyone can do that, but I believe that <laughs> I, I, I don't know, maybe it's like superiority complex, but I just feel like I'm... Sorry, just to pause here. Um, I said there, you know, um, I have a superiority complex because I want more from my life. That's utter bullshit. And that's like negative self-talk. So if you're thinking like, um, no, like I, I, I can't, I can't work on a business. Like if you're using words like, you know, I've got a bit of a superiority complex because I'm working on my own business. Like you, it's just not sustainable. And you can see why this guy fails because he just, he just has like negative self image and he thinks that any pedestalization of himself, any, um, instance of him like uplifting himself and making him feel proud of his work is like um you know bad ego or it's like superiority complex like all these words society uses to tear you down and like um what's the saying like the tallest the tallest poppy is the one that gets cut down or some something uh, that the hammer that uh, the nail that sticks out is the one that gets hammered you know what i mean okay so don't ever talk to yourself like this bit bit more than that just to be tied to like working time um you know so hopefully that made sense i don't think it did but um, that's kind of where I'm at. So looking at what I've currently envisioned in my head, I've got these business pro these fitness programs that I want to sell. I've got, um, you know, online courses that I'm going to build and that's all going to come together to focus on helping young men like myself, like who I was a few years ago, helping them to get on the right track with fitness, diet, um, speaking to other people, social skills, etc., stuff like that. So, um, yeah, look, not a bad idea, but um, this is because I used to watch a lot of self-improvement content back in the day and yeah, help, help young men. The thing you have to realize is like, you can't make a product if you don't know how to solve the problem. And like, just you, you, unfortunately, you just have to be a little bit realistic in business sometimes. And you have to think like, and it's nothing to do with age. It's more so just how the market is going to perceive your product. If someone were to look at me, like who I was, and you know, they were like only a couple of years younger, why would they buy my product as a teenager who's only made like a little bit of progress compared to like a YouTuber who's like 25 years old and he has authority in the space already. And he's like, you know, um, you need to do this, this, this. I've already got a course, blah, blah, blah. It's already helped millions of people. Like there was no concept of positioning, right? So in the market, you need to position yourself as um, something different to everyone. You can't like the, the reason why people fail is because they don't understand positioning and they go, Oh, well, like, you know, people will just buy my product because, you know, I, you know, I've done something different, but it's like, what have you done different? Like, like show that in the product and like, like what I was trying to do is I was like, all right, I'm going to be self-improvement, but I'm going to like, it mine's kind of different because it's coming from me. That's not really positioning. What I should have done is like positioned myself outside of the whole self-improvement space and more so towards like, you can have the same concepts, but it's the way you speak about your offer. Um, it's totally different. So I hope that made sense for you. All these products that I'm creating now are going to be made in order to help people. Um, whilst I am doing it for money, it's, I think it's important that with every product that I create, it's intended to help. Um, I'm not just trying to create products that I just think like, it's the same reason why I'd never do like merch or anything like that, unless it was like genuinely like, so this is quite like ironic because I actually did merch after this, like after this business failed, failed, um, I did merch. Like it was just one of my little tangents that I've done. I've done so many. Um, so this is quite funny. Cool clothing is because it just, it is quite literally just saying, Hey, like give me money for like some trash product that won't really help you. Well, that's not true too. So this guy thought that like things that don't help in the sense of like, um, improve you people, um, won't buy, but that's just obviously not true because you know, t-shirts like this exist. So you have to understand like, why does anyone buy anything? It's because they're in a state of pain and they're trying to reach a desire and you need to always bridge that gap with your offer, okay? So this guy didn't really understand this. He thought like, oh, like I was in self-improvement and I made some changes. So maybe I just like copy what I've seen and just put my own spin on it and that'll work. But you need to understand like the core principles of why anyone buys anything. Why did you buy a shirt? Why did I buy the shirt? Um, I don't know, because I needed a new shirt and I wanted a white one um, and I didn't have one, okay? So that was like my pain and that was like my desire. And your price is kind of going to reflect the value you create um, with your offer. I think that made sense. And value is essentially just um, solving solving the pain, like how much you solve, how big the pain is and how much you solve it. So wanting a t-shirt isn't really a big pain. 
Um, and you know, getting a t-shirt is, is like solving the problem, but it's not really like, because the pain's low, you can't really solve it massively. But a problem like, um, you know, depression or something like that, like I will fix your depression in 30 days, that could be your offer. And then you build the product around that. But when that's your offer, you have a massive pain threshold, people with depression. And you know, if you can create a really good offer around that, like, yes, it works, it's guaranteed, it's easy to do, um, there's no failure, there's money back if we fail, there's a short time frame. there's all this stuff, then in these big gaps that you've um, solved the issues with, that's when you can charge higher prices. So price is always reflective of the value you create. And this guy thought like, I would never do much because like, that's not really solving anyone's problems. It is solving problems, it's just not a large problem. Um, so just always understand that pain, pain, like everyone is always in a painful situation. Me, you, um, TV characters, like like any TV show, they start with a painful problem and the end of the show that it gets resolved. Or if it's like a soap opera, it'll kind of get resolved, but then there'll be a new problem right at the end and it'll lead into the next episode. Everything is pain, desire, pain, desire. And your offer is to bridge the gap between those two and connect them. So I think with all my products I want to create, I want them to be priced accurately to how much um help i believe they can give people so yeah that's a big look kind of what i explained then this makes sense um but internally my brain was like nah i'll kind of price it a little bit lower because like you know i'm not really there yet and like all this bullshit when you learn positioning you can basically price your product as, as much as you want because you're a market of one so if you're trying to compete with people and you're like, I'm going to do fitness products, um, you know, I'm competing with Mike Thurston with all these guys, blah, 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 blah. But my programs are like kind of different. Um, that's not a market of one. You're competing. And because you have to compete, your product becomes commoditized. And this basically means you, um, you know, you have to alter your price or you have to like lower your price to stay competitive. And when you lower your price, like everything just goes to shit. And if you want to know more about like this price, discrepancy um alex hormozy's 100 million dollar offers is a really good book if you haven't read it already or if you're not familiar with him um but this is super important to understand and this is what i was doing i didn't understand positioning and i was competing in a market of many and when you compete in a market of many you basically um what am i saying i forgot you basically have to like drop your prices to in order to compete and it's just shit and you lose self-respect for yourself because you're like you're doing work for like shit money like i, I was trying to do coaching for just like shit money like it was just pointless so big one but essentially that's what i'm working on right now i've got the fitness programs got the courses planned youtube channel planned plan plan planned everything was planned no action taken um you don't know if you like something you don't know if the market's going to like something until you put it out there and you take action so right now if you're planning something if you're you know i just need to get this thing done i just need to do this first like just take action like um pre-sell a course put out youtube videos immediately ask a friend like do you think this will genuinely work like you just need to put shit out there to see if it actually works. Cause like what I did here is I was like, I, I put so much effort and planning into this content. And then when I released it, no one watched it because that's just how YouTube works. No one watches your content when you first make it. And then because I was like kind of fragile in the ego and in like my stomach area, I was like, oh, this hurts. Like no one, like I planned for like six months and nobody um, bought my product or nobody did this. Like, how could this be? Like my life sucks. I'm so bad. I hate myself. And um, then you lose like morale and respect for yourself. So the sooner you get shit out there, um, the sooner you can iterate on that stuff and you can actually expand your products. But more importantly, like you have nothing to lose when you just put stuff out there straight away. If you like go back after this video and watch my first video, um, it's like nowhere, you can see my speaking has been nowhere near as good. But that's because I didn't plan. I just turned on the camera one day and I was like, hey guys, this is a new YouTube channel, blah, 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 blah. And with time, my speaking has just gotten better. So don't plan, um, always act first. In terms of uploading on YouTube and socials, I haven't really done any of that. I've been mucking around a bit with Instagram, but um, I'm really going to try and make those consistent, especially YouTube. Um, just because Instagram is just kind of cringy. I can't envision myself in a future where I do not think Instagram is not cringy. It is just always, I, I like YouTube because you can. So just a pause there. Once again, this guy is like, try, is, is just selfish. He's trying to say, I don't like Instagram. So therefore my market's not on Instagram. He's thinking like, oh no, Instagram's just so cringy. Like, oh, I don't want to make TikToks. I don't want to get people's attention. I don't want to like do all this bullshit. Buddy, like you got to realize if you actually want to make some money and you want to sell some stuff, like who gives a shit what you feel like? Like really? It's just so selfish. It's, this is like, 
um, th this was my beginner experience, just selfish, just like, oh, I don't like this and I'm going to do this and people will buy it because I'm special. No, you can't be like that. It's always got to be about the market. What I should have been thinking is, okay, what's my niche? Uh, let's just say 18 year old guys. Okay. Where are 18 year old guys hanging out? TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, even less. But my, oh, sorry, I don't mean to give you the finger, but my focus was on YouTube just because I thought the other two were cringy, okay? You can't think like this. You have to always look at your market and you always got to think like, where is my market? You know, what's going on? What are they thinking? Where are they? How do they feel? I didn't ask myself any of this because I was like, uh, avatar creation, you know, dream, dream avatar creation, understanding my customer, that's boring. That's going to require me to think, no, hell no, I'll just be selfish. So don't be like this. Portray your thoughts better. Um, you know, Instagram is like, like you only get a certain amount of characters and it's so, um, uh, what's the word? Like based around um, capturing audience attention. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, this is something that took me ages to get over. I was like, I don't want to use retention strategies. I don't want to like do this stuff. You just got to get over it. Like don't hate the player, hate the game. Don't don't be like, I'm ruining people's dopamine, blah, 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 blah. Because if, you're, if your offer is good and your product's good and you're getting like, Let's say my offer was, and my product was helping people get over um, like low attention span or helping them fix their dopamine, dopamine detox. What I used to think in the past was, well, I wanna help people with dopamine detox, but I don't wanna ruin their dopamine even more by making content on, the, on Instagram. That's not how you have to think. You have to think, okay, there's someone struggling. Where are they hanging out? They're already on Instagram. My, if my product's good and I know I can genuinely help them, then I'm gonna meet them where they're at. And I'm gonna say, hey buddy, come over here. Let's fix your dopamine. Let's do this, you know, like educate them where they're currently at. Don't like sit over here and go, hey buddy, you hear me? Are, are you over there? Like all this stuff, like you, you can't think like that. You have to meet people where they are and you have to, um, meet them at their entry point and you have to go like, hey dude, you know, this Instagram shit is like maybe not what you think. Like it, it might be hurting your, you know, your dopamine or whatever. And then you got to say like, you know, let's come over here. But to do that, you have to meet them where they're at. You might have to use retention strategies. You might have to use some audience capture and you might have to, you know, target some pain points and stuff like that. You can't be selfish. You can't think, I don't like this, so I'm not going to do this. It doesn't work. So I feel like you can't really convey like a proper message like you can with YouTube. In, uh, YouTube's the same, but I feel like people are more willing to listen for longer. Um, anyway, I'm going to start uploading on those. So that should be good. The big focus I'm will gonna be I'm going to start. You. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Like so much planning went into this and I uploaded one video. Actually, I think I uploaded two and I just canceled like right after. I had like four in the works because I thought like batching content straight from the get-go was the play. It's not literally like if you're thinking about starting a youtube channel which i highly recommend you do it's been so like helpful for me and it's going to help you in business if you want to start a business just start like I, I understand this is so cliche but you just need to turn on your camera and just say something you're interested in and no one's going to give a shit okay and you'll actually be surprised though like i i thought that if i made low quality content people would be like fuck you like your content's trash you, it's not actually like that i have such lovely people that comment on my videos and say hey dude like good job if your content is just authentic and genuine people appreciate that and more than ever people just want to connect with someone they don't care about, you know, like crazy edits and all this stuff. You perceive it to be that way because you see videos like Mr. Beast and stuff with all these views and you think, wow, like he must be making so much money. If I want to make money and I want to get an audience attention that I need to do all that stuff. Um, but it's just not the, the true reality. If you want to actually sell people your products, then they need to trust you. And if you want to gain trust, literally just make videos like this and just be authentic and just talk. It's not, it's not hard. It is scary at first, um, but you'll quickly realize the more you do it, it's like, it's so easy. It's probably one of the best uh, social media platforms is YouTube for just this authentic, just speaking content. Um, that's basically all I have to say. YouTube, I think that's really important to help grow what I think I can offer as well as helping me improving speaking skills. You can even see now I can't look at the camera. I'm, I'm um, fidgeting, stuff like that. So I really want to do it just to help me. Um, and overall, just, just building those skills of content creation, speaking, um, just learning new things, building online platforms. And then hopefully all of this is going to come together to help me essentially be free from a location so i'm gonna assume that if all goes to plan all i will really need is a laptop and a camera that is all i'll need to that's true yep um yep i mean what what you're seeing here is is everything phone which is my camera and my laptop it's all i need um which is pretty cool that i kind of guess this i guess you want to say 
Um, and I'm just going to interject on a side note as well. One thing I didn't cover is that this guy wasn't just doing his fitness programs. He was doing fitness programs. He was doing coaching. He was doing all this stuff. If you want to succeed, you just need to focus on, because this is this product based mindset where you think like, I'm going to help this with this product and this with this product. And I'm going to hit this area with this product, but just think of who you want to help, what their, what pains they're experiencing, how you can resolve that pain better than anyone else. How you can position that um, solution different to everyone else. And then only then do you build a product based around that offer. So don't try to do multiple things at once. Just focus on one thing and do it well. Um, yeah. I upload content. Um, you know, I'm thinking all of this stuff is basically cloud-based. The only thing I'll need is like Premiere on my laptop to edit. Everything else is web-based, cloud-based. So um, that's cool. So hopefully location freedom hopefully. and time freedom. Language like hopefully doesn't help anyone. It's not gonna help you, okay? So money not being tied to time. I can take a day off and still earn the same amount of money as I- Still yet to achieve this boys, but, and girls. Uh, but we do have the location freedom, which is pretty sick. I would if I was working that day or anything like that. So that's the main goal. Um, yeah, that's basically it in terms of business. So I'll actually come together in the end. I'll predict where I think I will be in a year. Um, just tapping on other stuff, um, just like friendships and stuff, just feeling a little bit alone at the moment. Just don't really, don't really feel like I've got anyone to kind of talk to. People don't really have anyone that's interested in the same things that I'm interested. In. And if they are, they don't really take anything as seriously as I do. Um, Another entrepreneur mistake, beginner entrepreneur mistake. I used to perceive that friends were the issue because I didn't like to drink, I didn't like to go out, I didn't like to do just like DJ and stuff. Um, so I perceived that friends were the issue because friends were the ones that did all this stuff. The issue is the DJ activities, right? And I only realized this kind of recently um, in the past like five months or so. But I used to think all friends are bad. Like if I have friends, they're gonna take me away from my entrepreneurial mindset, grind set, like my hustling, all this bullshit. You need people in your life. It's a harsh truth. No one else will say this. Everyone will be like, oh, you just need to hustle and grind in a dark room by yourself, all this bullshit. You need people in your life. And it's something I'm still trying to work out or I am still working out. Um, but recently I've just developed such friendships and just meeting people and just dropping my guard. And it's crazy how much this invigorates you. If you're you know, similar to my past self and myself now where you don't wanna do degenerate activities, you don't wanna drink, you don't wanna smoke, you don't wanna do drugs, you don't just wanna do dumb stuff, that's okay, but don't isolate yourself. Don't like, don't think, oh, I'm, I'm like no one else my age, I'm so unique. Like what is, um, you know, you gotta think, whatever you're thinking up here, another person is definitely thinking this in your area. Like even, even if you think you're in like a small town, I'm sure there's one other person your age that experiences this. And what this guy didn't do was he was like, no, all friends are bad. It's all, it's all a lie. It's all a joke. Um, I just need to grind by myself, all this stuff. What I should have done in hindsight is put myself out there. And it's really hard um, when you have like this social anxiety and this low confidence um, and it can actually logically manifest into thinking that you don't need friends. So you'll feel like internally bad about talking to people and you'll logically justify it by going, no, all friends are bad, like blah, 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 blah. I'm so unique. It's not true. There are plenty of people out there like you. You just need to put yourself out there um, and not put yourself out there as in start doing drugs and all this stuff, but just put yourself out there. Go to some clubs, go to like, like you just gotta just take the stick up out of your ass and then just go, all right, you know, I'm alone right now and it's gonna be tough trying to make friends, but how do I do it? Like there's gotta be a way. You need people because you need to validate your ideas with people. You need someone to hold you accountable. And you just need you just need people in your life. You're a human being. Humans are social creatures. We're not meant to be isolated in rooms like looking at Excel spreadsheets all day. We're meant to be out. We're meant to be talking, laughing, sharing ideas, challenging our beliefs. It's it's essential if you want to start a business and you're a new entrepreneur. So do not isolate yourself. Don't listen to any of this other bullshit that talks about hustling, grinding, all this stuff. Um, yeah, but I just... Yeah, I just feel like, I don't know, there's not many that sounding kind of like, um, uh, what's the word? Like egotistical or something. I, I just, I haven't found that many people that are similar to me. Um, because you didn't put yourself out there. Oh, that's, that's pretty much simple. And also my language here, I don't want to sound egotistical. Dude, like you are egotistical. You are of the ego here. 
you have such like barriers of resistance in your brain that you're scared to put yourself out there because you think you're better than everyone else. Um, but here I was like, I don't want to be egotistical because, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put myself up a peg because I was so used to being in school all these years and listening to all this dog shit and watching the news, all this stuff. Where I was like, if you speak highly of yourself or if you say you're kind of unique, it's put, um, it, you know, it's like bad. It's not bad. Um, so yeah, don't talk to yourself like that. So hopefully that's going to improve in the future. Hopefully. I'm hoping like that stuff like, like this. this will, putting myself out there more will, um, improving social skills. But yeah, just, just really kind of working on... I'm sorry I keep pausing, but things like I'm going to improve my social skills. That wasn't the issue. The issue was like social anxiety. And I've only realized this now if you watch my, my previous few videos. The issue isn't you need to learn more, you need to do more, you need to know more, you need to go to a Tony Robbins event, you need to read this book, you need to do this. If it's not helping these internal feelings and this resistance to the action, then it's nothing's going to work. So I, I know like at this time, I'd read plenty of books on social skills, but I was like, I need to learn more. I need to do this because I'm still not comfortable. You need to conf uh, con confront that inner uncomfortability if you want to see change. You can't just learn more and stack shit on top of the weak base because eventually the house will just fall down. You need to build up the base and then only then can you build up from there and go... Tch -tch -tch -tch. Okay, social skills. Like you, Once you have a good foundation, then start adding the social skills. But if you're building a house on sand, which is like low confidence, low lack of self-worth, then it's just going to crumble and it doesn't matter. Myself trying to create... Um trying to portray my truest self to the world and sticking with who I want to be. Um, I feel like that's the only way to attract people who are genuinely interested in the things that I'm interested and uh, interested in and interested in me as well. Um, the only way I feel I can do that is to continue to be myself fully and hold myself accountable. Um, Especially at the moment, I've done a lot of stuff that's um, helpful in social settings, but not helpful to me and who I think I can be. Um, so hopefully that's gonna change. And I think sticking to who I am is really gonna help um, help me improve finding people in the future that are similar to me. So pardon me for that. That didn't really make sense, but <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, just it's just very evident from this video that I just had such low confidence, constantly saying, oh, I don't think that made sense. <laughs> Awkward laugh. Um, you know, hopefully scratching face, scratching neck. Oh, hopefully that'll get fixed in the future. Yeah, I don't, like I'm trying to plan this thing out and yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> just so such low self-confidence. So if you kind of see yourself in my past self here, just know like shit can change so easy and it just comes with just confronting those inner feelings and like don't get me wrong i've i've grown a lot by doing the basic self-help stuff in the past year but my best biggest growth has been rethinking how i perceive myself and rethinking things i've told myself for years and just taking taking a back seat from the logical part and just feeling and just understanding like why do i feel this way internally why do i get nervous when i'm in a group of people i don't know and i have to speak like genuinely it's not that like shakespeare said i always say this but nothing is good or bad thinking makes it so if you're in a group of people and it's a friendly scenario but you just don't know them and you feel like you're gonna die something's wrong there and learning social skills learning you know how to look people in the eye it might help on the outside but on the inside if you don't confront that inner feeling it's not gonna go away next up so that's kind of that um, still living at home I think that that will probably be the same in a year maybe I would like to move out I'd probably like to move city um, just try and find new people like I said new crowd um, again, thinking small, you know, I wanted to move city because I thought that that would be a good growth opportunity. And it's not wrong. That definitely would have been. But when you start to think big and you think, okay, what's like the craziest shit I could actually do? Um, move to Thailand or like I could even do something crazier than this. This is still pretty inside my comfort zone now that I'm um, climatized to this place. But yeah, like just don't ever sell yourself short because you it's all just societal conditioning. It's all just, you know, the craziest thing you can do is like move an hour away from your parents' house. Like, no, like you can do some crazy shit. Like go outside and, and you know, just ask yourself, what's the craziest shit? What is the shit that would challenge me the most? 
And since doing this, I've grown a lot and I hope I can, uh, sorry, I don't mean to use words like hope, I will continue to challenge myself in the future. So just, yeah, never never cut yourself short, never think small because it's just not gonna get you anywhere. Um, and just try and, I feel like reinventing yourself is, is something really important. I've probably made a video on that at this point because I really want to do that, but sure. um, it's like when you go to a new school, you go, oh, I'm gonna reinvent myself and then you change your whole personality or you try to be cool, or something like that. So I think um, giving yourself those opportunities to reinvent yourself is important. Um, so I'm gonna try and do that in the future. So currently still living at home, maybe living at home in the future, maybe not, depends on how successful this goes or what happens. And, and just to touch on it one more time, um, you can clearly see in my language and my speaking that I have no idea what I actually want. Like the first, <laughs> It's funny, I might make a full video on this because it's hilarious. The The funniest question you can ask someone who's trying to be successful is, what does su uh, success look like to you? And genuinely, try and answer that. If you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you should be able to answer that. Because if you can't answer that like that, then <laughs> how are you gonna reach success if you don't even know what it is? It's hilarious and like, this took me years to get. And if you're curious how you find what success looks like, just take a moment, just detract from, uh, is that the word? Detract from all the random dog shit, from the outside world, from YouTube videos, from reading, from self-help, all this stuff. Sit down with a document on your computer and just think like, what does success look like to me? Do I have a girlfriend? What does my business look like? What am I doing each day? How much am I earning? What do my thoughts look like? What does my body look like? How do I feel internally? Just all these, like you need to understand the state you wanna be in because if you don't, you're just gonna just fly through life and it's like, oh, maybe that's what success looks like. Oh, maybe 10K per month. The YouTuber told me 10K per month. You're just gonna fly around everywhere. So you can see in this language that I have no idea what I want and that's why I didn't get anywhere. And it's only once I realized what I want, then I actually saw some changes. With that, um, overall, um, what else can I touch on? We've done business, social, um, lifestyle. Yeah, just generally just going gym five days a week, working on business for a few hours every morning. And then I've got work at night. Um, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just got like kind of upset for, <laughs> for a second. I don't know why I was just thinking about like stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Everyone's just kind of annoying me at the moment, dude. So just a bit sick of it. Just want to work on who I am and what I think is important to helping me grow and kind of experience new things. Yeah, again, um, again though, the growth isn't the issue. It's the isolation and it's the just hiding from, from the issues, okay? So don't, don't use the excuse that you hear online that it's all about growth and it's all about this, it's all about that. Sometimes you might need to go back a few steps and kind of experience a bit of pain, experience a bit of uncomfortableness and only through that can you kind of grow past that because otherwise you're just gonna be capped, right? Like. You can, if your like inner anxiety level is here and there's some like unconquered stuff you need to get over, you can build up all you want, but eventually it's just gonna cap out, right? So you need to remove this and then only once that's removed can you increase it um, with more self-help stuff, with more techniques, with all, with more systems, all this stuff. Um, not being tied to this claustrophobic lifestyle of working speaking to the same people doing the same things um just because i'm told i have to it's really boring so yeah we're gonna work we're gonna work on improving that and hopefully by the time i'm 21 i upload this video i look at it and um hopefully i'm in a better spot than where i am now um but yeah and i might make another video on this too i might make a video on like negative self-talk stuff like this but this guy used to always think um, when I'm here, like when I get there, then I'll be happy. When this happens, then this will do this. When you think about that, like let's just logically analyze this for a, uh, a second. When you're constantly thinking about when I get there, when I get there, time will pass. So say this is you in the present moment and you're thinking when I get there in the future, in the future, in the future. But if you're always thinking about um, the future in the present, guess what happens? Do, 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 they move together, okay? So you think, oh, when I get this in the future, and you think, you know, time's gonna pass and you're, you're, you're eventually gonna reach it, not how it works. Because when you use language like eventually, when you think thoughts like maybe one day this, they move together. It's always just running from you, you know? It's always, oh, eventually. It's always, I'll get there eventually. So what you need to do is you need to think, okay, you need to think like, I've got this now, okay? You need to think, you know, you need to think abundance. You need to think just from this lack of just like, oh, eventually, maybe, surely, hopefully. You just gotta think, all right, I've got this now. This is how I act. This is what I do. And you need to reframe your entire identity and how you perceive yourself. Because if you don't, you'll just be chasing shadows the entire life. You need to make that your current personality 
and then with time, like time will still pass, but, and then things will come to fruition. And then your current identity will eventually like absorb into that future identity, but it's no longer the future identity because it's your past identity. Hope that made sense. I've just spitballed this. I'll make a video on it if that sounds of interest and I'll break it down. So it's a bit more easier to understand. Overall, just wanted to say good luck. I'm sure you'll do great. I'm Thank sure we've you. done great. We have. You know, a, a year is a lot of time to get things done contrary to um, what people believe. I feel like a year is, is a ton of time to... Yeah, this is very true. 365 days to work on your business, to work on your fitness, to work on your mindset. That's a lot of time. Like you can make changes like this. You, you can just have one breakthrough day where things just click differently and you, you kind of break through that inner feeling of negativity or you learn some trick that just elevates you. That can happen in one day. So think 365 of those, you know, you can make massive progress in, in, in that time. Don't ever think that you, you know, a year is just like, cause years go by like this. So it, it's easy to like look back on your past self and go, that was a year ago. I made no progress in that time. Um, you can make a lot of progress in that time, but don't think you can also like, oh, I'll be rich in a year. I'll be a millionaire and I'll like blah, 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 blah. Because when you think in time frames, that's when you never achieve anything because you're constantly thinking like, oh, like in six months, I'll have 10K per month. And then blah, 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 blah. Like you just got to think, okay, Okay. as time will pass I will eventually achieve my goals remove time frames from everything but also understand that like you, you can change a lot like you can change quickly so that's basically all I have to say change and update and do new things so I believe that we've probably done that hopefully probably, um, in hopefully. terms of just general goals um, I don't like to set number goals because I think that you can only tie yourself to that amount realistically though it's kind of hard to say some people make channels and it, it takes them three years to get a thousand subs and then I'm so nervous here to say just what I want and my goals like I'm scared someone's gonna judge me like who cares dude you're sitting in your room by yourself like just make shit happen like I was literally scared here here to say I want 10k per month I want this I want that I was like well some people like maybe see change and like you know maybe if I get lucky like other people will blow up instantly so it's hard to say however I think that I think that we can get to around 10K in the first year. If I'm consistent, I'm talking 365 days of consistency in building the the um, the channel. So I mean, oh, what the hell? What is closed captions? Um, I'm talking 10K subs, which is quite funny um, because I'm, I'm not there yet. So, you know, we do get things wrong. Like don't, and this is why timeframes is so important because I started this YouTube channel and I was like, in a year's time, I'm going to hit 10 K per month. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to like, I'm going to have so many friends. Finally, I'm going to make some money. It's going to be awesome. When you don't achieve that, you just want to go, you just hate your life. You're like, you know, when like I, um, I uploaded my first video. So when you think in the time frame of 10 K, um, 10 K subs in a year's time, when you upload your first video and it gets no views, especially after like days and days of planning, uh, guess what? That feels like shit. And you're like, am I dumb? Do I suck? Am I ugly? Why is no one watching this? When in reality, this, it's just the nature of YouTube. You're just not going to get views on your first videos. Um, so never like, don't like, again, this is time frame based thinking. So I was like 10K subs in one year. And then when that wasn't on track to be completed, it was just like, oh, I hate my life. Um, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, eventually, I mean like soon, like I just got to keep uploading videos and just be myself. And in reality, this is um, subscriber based thinking, which is quite funny. This guy was so focused on subscribers that he was making videos that he didn't even like. And because he didn't like the videos, um, he stopped them like early. Whereas in these videos that I make for you now, I genuinely like these videos. So the subscriber goal is just detached. It's like, I don't give a shit. Um, because ultimately also when you're being authentic and when you're being you, the people that watch your content are more like, um, like genuine like fans of you if you want to use that word like they genuinely like you and you have real interactions when you're just making content just for clicks and views and all this stuff you just get like zombies in your comments that are just like blah, 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 blah. like they just say stupid stuff but like when you're authentic and you don't care about subscribers and you're making videos that you like it really shows on camera and then you get people in your comments that are like hey bro i like this video i really like when you said this like dude people leave me massive paragraphs and i'm like wow that's so awesome so I just want to thank you for that if you're watching this, if you're one of those people. Um, but that's basically it. Or the socials or anything like that. I think 10K is reasonable on, on YouTube. Um, in terms of monetary 
value like how much i can earn i don't have don't really have an idea i'd like to shoot for 10k a month but that is um it's a hard one to gauge because i haven't built the infrastructure yet to kind of so focused on infrastructure focused on planning and you know scared to say what his actual goals were we hit 10k per month through online sales not through business yet um but that'll be soon hopefully uh, oh, fuck it i keep saying this stuff i'm like that's so bad don't use that language um i might need to monitor that i mean i might need i might still do it without me realizing hopefully not guys <laughs> but <laughs> But um, yeah, you don't be afraid to like say your goals. Don't be afraid to say, I want to reach this. But more importantly, don't just focus on numbers as your goals. A lot of people do this. They just have this this dream of 10K per month. Ooh, so exciting. It's like, it's just a number. Um, actually think about how you're going to get there and help, how you're going to help people and how you're going to you know, actually provide some value to the market before you start worrying about numbers because the number in your bank account is just a result of the value you've created. So simple as that. Gauge that, um, you know, to compare over time how I could grow. Um, but I think that is also a reasonable goal. Um, yeah, overall, just wanted to say, um, just, yeah, good luck. I'm sure you've done good. I'm sure the boys have done good that watch these videos. And um, yeah, let's give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason why I did that little like um, Loki strange creepy smile at the end is because this YouTube channel was going to be called Give It A Go. So I was like, oh, give it a go, guys. Um, when in reality, I didn't give it a go. I just like planned. So it's quite funny. But pretty sure I just covered everything in this video. You know, if you enjoyed and you want to, another one of my videos that are a bit different to this and more edited, make sure you check out one of these videos. My name is Marcus. If you enjoyed, subscribe. And I'll see you again very, very soon. All right. Much love. Catch you later. Bye-bye.